Dear friends, while the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, a far smaller city named Ai chased down and killed 36 of the Israelite army. It not only broke their hearts, but were left spineless. Their hearts melted like water. Were the inhabitants of Ai far better in warfare, or was God not able to help them like before? Join me as we move ahead to investigate what went drastically wrong. How good to have you again, brothers and sisters. God has given us another opportune time to study His Word, the Bible, and I warmly welcome you in our midst. Previously, we were looking at the actual conquest of Canaan, starting with Jericho. Joshua followed the Lord's command, walking around the city for seven days, with seven priests blowing their trumpets and walking before the ark as the people followed in silence. It was only on the seventh day that they encircled the city seven times and gave a loud cry at the command of Joshua. True to Yahweh's promise that he would fight battles on their behalf, the wall of Jericho crashed down as its soldier charged ahead, every man straight before him. There were three things worth noting as the city was taken. First, Rahab and her family were speared as the Israelite spies promised. Second, Joshua pronounced a curse on anyone who attempts to rebuild the city in the future. Third, no soldier was to salvage anything for themselves except for the treasury of the Lord. With that great victory behind us, I welcome you again to join me as we continue to follow Israel through the conquest. Please turn with me to chapter 7 of Joshua. The worst enemy that you have is yourself. He occupies the same skin that you occupy. He uses the same brain that you use in thinking his destructive thoughts. He uses the same hands that you use to perform his own deeds. This enemy can do you more harm than anyone else. He is the greatest handicap that you and I have in our daily Christian life. There are two factors that make dealing with this enemy doubly difficult. In the first place, we are reluctant to recognize and identify him. We are loath to label him as an enemy. The fact of the matter is most of us rather like him. The second problem is that he is on in the inside of us. If he would only come out and fight like a man, it would be different, but he will not. It is not because he is a coward, but because he can fight better from his position right from within us. The enemy within has destroyed nations, cities and individuals. The enemy within is far more deadly and dangerous than enemies from the outside. My friend, an individual can be destroyed from the inside. Alexander the Great was probably the greatest military genius who has moved armies across the pages of his history. There has been no one like him. By the age of 35, he had conquered the world, but he died a drunkard. He had conquered the world, but he could not conquer Alexander the Great. There was an enemy within that destroyed him. The only battle that the children of Israel lost in taking the promised land was a battle in which the defeat came not from without but from within. When the children of Israel entered the promised land, three conspicuous and outstanding ones or towns or cities stood in their way. They were Jericho, Ai and the Gibeonites. These three enemies of Israel prevented Israel's enjoyment and possession of the promised land. The land was there. God had told them that it was theirs. God had given them the title deed in his promise to Abraham. To Joshua he had said, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, to you have I given it, as I spake unto Moses. God was saying to them, It is yours, go in and possess and enjoy what you have. What a lesson that is for us today. 
These people were given a land that was made up of 300,000 square miles and even in their best days, they only occupied 30,000 square miles. A lot of us have given every spiritual blessing, but many of us do not enjoy them. How many of them are really yours? You have the title deed to them, but have you claimed them? And are you enjoying them as He intended? God has made all of these things available to us if we only go but try and obtain them. There are battles to be fought and victories to be won. In Joshua chapter 7 and 8, defeat and victory at I represents the flesh in the believer. The sin of Achan was sin in the camp. Steps in sins of the flesh are I saw physical I coveted, mental, I took, volitional. There will be no deliverance until sin is dealt within the life of the believer. Now let us look at the text. Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. But the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. This verse tells us that the children of Israel committed a trespass. But it was one man, Achan, who committed the sin. The whole nation had to suffer because of what Achan did. If one member suffers, then all members suffer. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honoured, all the members rejoice with it. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 26. Verse 2 of chapter 7. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near beth -Aven, to the east of Bethel and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Just send two or three thousand men to take it and do not weary all the people for only a few men are there. Jericho and I represent the world. The people of Israel represent the flesh. Some of us are marching around Jericho blowing trumpets as we talk about being separated Christ followers. We declare we don't do this and we don't do that. We put off everything that seems to be worldly. Sure, we have overcome the world. But what about the flesh? Dear friend, what about the flesh within? The flesh has many people in chains. We think we are living the Christian life. In fact, we talk about living the victorious life. Yet, I doubt whether we do know what it really is. The victorious life is His life. He is the one who gets the victory and not us. The children of Israel win the flush of victory. They had overcome Jericho. Although it was God's victory, in a short time Israel thought of it as their victory. Joshua sent some of his men to look at Ai. After looking at the city over carefully, they said, Ai is nothing compared to Jericho. Verse 4, So about 3,000 men went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slope. At this the hearts of the people melted and became like water. The men of Ai defeated Israel. The flesh defeats you and me. We cannot use the same tactics to overcome the flesh as we use to overcome the world. The Israelites did not recognize their weakness. The Apostle Paul recognized his weakness when he said, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Romans chapter 7 verse 18 Have you found out, my friend, that you have no strength or power within yourself? You cannot live the Christ-like life and God never asked you to. God wants to live 
his life through you. In Romans 7, Paul discovered that there was no good thing in his old nature. He also found out that there was no power in his new nature. The new nature wants to live for God but does not have the power to do it. In Romans 8, we are introduced to the Holy Spirit of God. It is only when we are filled with God's Holy Spirit that we can live the Christian life. Verse 6 of Joshua chapter 7 Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same thing and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Ah, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of Jordan. He cannot understand why he lost the battle, so he tears his clothes and cries out. Verse 8 O Lord, what can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Listen to what the Lord said, verse 10. The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? He says to Joshua, Get up off your face and cut out all this whining in sackcloth and ashes. There are many of us who spend our prayer time whining before the Lord. It won't do any good, dear friend. We need to get at the root of the problem. Don't bend your knees in praise, worship and prayer when you've got to get up and deal with the sin that is within you. Verse 11 of chapter 7 Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. Joshua did not know that Israel had sinned. God told Joshua that sin was in the camp and he would have to deal with it. Verse 14 In the morning, present yourselves tribe by tribe. The tribe that the Lord takes shall come forward clan by clan. The clan that the Lord takes shall come forward family by family. And the family that the Lord takes shall come forward man by man. I wonder why God took so much time in order for him to identify Achan. I am sure God did know that Achan had actually sinned. But I guess all of this was done so that Achan would be having that opportunity in order to confess his sin. But as we know, Achan never does that until he was caught. The tribe of Judah and the family of the Zarites were found to be guilty. Verse 18 Joshua had his family come forward man by man And Achan, son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Israel had to go through this long procedure in order to find the guilty party. I am sure God would have probably shown grace to Achan if he had only confessed, instead of waiting quietly while this long procedure was going on. It was difficult for them to distinguish evil in the camp. We blindfold our eyes to the evil in our own communities. We tend to see evil all around us and we are pretty fond of and good at pointing the accusing finger. But we seldom identify the sin in ourselves. How tragic that is. Verse 19 Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him the praise. Tell me what have you done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. 
noticed the steps of Achan's sin. He saw. He coveted. Then he took. These are the steps of the sin of the flesh. The old sin of the flesh sees, covets and then takes. This was what Eve did. She saw, then she desired the fruit and finally took and ate it. Now what does Achan do when he is confronted? He confesses, he lays it right out. My son, give glory to the Lord, verse 18, the God of Israel, and give him the praise. Confession is considered as giving glory and praise to God. It would be meaningless for us to profess praises and glory to God by exclaiming how great he is when it would be more appropriate for us to fall on our knees in confession of our sin as we look at sin within our own sinful selves. For believers today, how are we going to overcome the flesh? We have to deal with sin in our own lives. We can overcome the flesh by obedience with God's power. Romans 8, 1-3 tells us that Jesus Christ is with us to enable us to have that victory. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 The Spirit of God enables us and gives us access to the Father. Then verse 26 The Spirit helps us. The only way we can overcome the flesh is being in commune with the triune God who enables us to say no to ungodliness. It's a struggle. We may lose battles. But God's grace and cleansing power enables us to find forgiveness. True confession does not deal in generalities. Spell it out as Achan did. I saw them. I coveted them, I took them. Tell God everything that is in your heart. Just open it up to Him. You might as well tell Him because He already knows about it. Mel Trotter told about a man on the board of his Pacific Garden mission, a doctor who when he prayed would say, Lord, if I have sinned, forgive my sins. Mel Trotter got tired of listening to that. Finally, he went to the doctor and said to him, Listen, doc, you say... If I have sinned, don't you know whether you have sinned or not? The doctor said, well, I guess I do. Don't you know what your sin is? No, the doctor said. I don't know what it is. Mel Trotter then told him, if you don't know, then just guess. The next time the doctor prayed, Mel said he guessed it the first time. It is amazing, friends, the way we beat around the bush, even in our praying. We tell God, if we have sinned, please forgive us. I guess it's more appropriate for us to be able to say, God, we have sinned. We have done wrong and spell it out. There can be no joy in your life. There can be no power in your life. There can be no victory in your life until there is confession of sin. Verse 25 of chapter 7 of Joshua. Joshua said, Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burnt them. Over Achan they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore that place has been called the Valley of Acre ever since. This is a serious situation and it is emphasized for believers in the New Testament. If we don't judge ourselves, God has to step in and judge us and His judgment is sometimes pretty serious. And it will do us no good to complain and whine like Joshua did. The thing to do is to go to God and get the miserable thing straightened out. When we confess our sin to Him and turn from it, then we will experience the joy of the Lord. Chapter 8 Victory at I. As we have seen in chapter 7, Israel suffered a defeat at the little city of Ai. And the reason for the defeat was sin in the camp. Now the sin has been dealt with and God is prepared to give Israel the victory. Verse 1 of chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai his people, his city, and his land. 
you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush around the city. You will recall that at the battle of Jericho, they were not to take any of the prey or the spoil for themselves. But here God tells them to take what they want. Why the difference? Note that God tells Joshua to take Ai by ambush. Verse 7 You are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it, you have my orders. Verse 9 Then Joshua sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush, and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent that night with the people. As we read on, we see that the strategy worked just as Joshua planned, and the city of Ai fell easily into the hands of Israel. Because I represents the flesh, we learn from this episode great spiritual lessons. First of all, there must be recognition of the enemy and his potential. We must realize that the greatest enemy you and I have is our own selves. The devil made me do it is not a good excuse. Don't give unnecessary credit to the devil. It is us who are responsible. Second, we must examine very carefully the reasons for our defeats. Primarily, the reason for defeat is our dependence upon our own ability. You remember that the spies said to Joshua, you will need only about two or three thousand men to overcome little I. And we think the flesh will be easy to overcome. We depend on ourselves to do it. We will have to come to the same place to which Paul came when he cried out, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? My friend, you and I cannot control the flesh. Only the Spirit of God can do that. The tragedy is that thousands are trying to control and eradicate it in their own strength. You cannot improve and control this thing we know as the flesh or the sin nature. God says you cannot. Only the Holy Spirit can control it. Christ died not only that you might have salvation, but he died that this sin nature might be dealt with. This simply means that when Christ came to this earth, he not only died for your sins that you might gain salvation, but he died to bring into judgment this old sin nature. Otherwise, God could not touch us with a 40-foot pole because we are evil. Christ died because I have a sin nature and you and I have a sin nature. The Holy Spirit could not touch us until Christ had paid that penalty. When the penalty was paid and our sin nature was condemned, then the Holy Spirit could and did come into our lives and bring victory out of defeat. As Paul expressed it, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The flesh will defeat us, unless we are depending upon the power of the Holy Spirit to win the victory. We find that after the victory at Ai, Joshua built an altar to the Lord on Mount Ebal. Then the Israelites did what Moses had commanded, and Joshua read the blessings and cursings. You'll find this in chapter 8 verses 34 to 35. Note that the entire law of Moses was read. They did not read just a part of it, they read all of it. This was to be the law of the land and it was a time for Israel to be reminded of the conditions of God's covenant with her. From these two chapters, it's important for us to identify sin in our own lives before we can eradicate or defeat evil elsewhere. Though I was small, they were able to defeat the people of God because God was trying to get the attention of the people. Well, have you been experiencing unexplainable losses and defeat? You know you are capable and strong to overcome the situations, but somehow you have been falling down. Well, is God trying to call your attention to some sin? Have you by any way robbed God of some things that duly belong to Him? 
Have you robbed him of your time, talents and money? You alone know what you have been doing with your life. Yes, even before you can get on your knees and cry out in pain because of defeat, it may be good to take a serious evaluation of yourself. Allow God to search you and deal with that sin ruthlessly. Confess and cut it out before you can experience great victory in Christ. Well, there are different ways to enjoy a Bible study, and I hope today is one. There are several lessons packed within this episode. That obedience is the only true way towards God's blessing. That grit, in true sense, gains us nothing. That the desire for anything against the will of God is an idolatry that deserves death. That our flesh cannot be trusted because we are corrupted beyond understanding ourselves. That without God, we can do nothing. Dear friends, Certainly the least can go on, but my prayer for today is that we will have a lifelong memory of the need to obey God and depend on Him. Yes, Achan sinned by disobeying God, but the whole army of Israel also sinned by over-dependence on themselves. We cannot rely on ourselves alone, nor take ourselves or our hearts for granted. The heart is so deceptive that it can blow one beyond the real self. A sin-filled heart does not only belittle other humans, but also attempts to often climb above God Himself. As you strive to walk closer to God each day, may you delight in His wisdom and plans for you. God bless you. Did you like this program? Give us a missed call now, and you may be the next winner.